Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, through your word, we pray that you would help us to realize which bread is of the highest priority in our lives, the spiritual bread that comes from you or the physical bread that uh, goes into our stomachs. Uh, help us to understand which is of higher priority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Matthews, chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. That's Matthews, chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Our subject for today is the first temptation. The first temptation. There were three in uh, those early verses of Matthew chapter 4. This is the first one uh, of ch tempting, trying to tempt Jesus into changing stones into bread. Now, verse 2 through 4 involves the love of God and the will of God. That's the love of God and the will of God. Satan questioned Jesus saying, you are God's beloved son, so why doesn't your father feed you? Why, didn't, why did he put you into this terrible wilderness? Satan realized that God was, uh, that it was God's will that Jesus be in the wilderness and he didn't realize that he was not in control of the situation. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit always uses especially difficult or what seems to be impossible situations as teaching opportunities. And even though we are usually either slow to learn or we completely reject God's teachings because we are hard-headed or stiff-necked, but now Satan, on the other hand, never learns from God's teaching. Satan uh, has been known to make attempts to use God's teachings through his word to undermine God's purpose and plan for us. This temptation sounded like Satan's words to Eve in Genesis chapter 3. It is subtle, suggestion. Uh, that our Father does not love us. Satan suggests that Jesus should use his divine power to meet his own physical needs. That should easily remind us of our own encounters with the devil. When we put our physical needs ahead of our spiritual needs, we lose the battle and we sin. When we allow circumstances to dictate our actions, Instead of following God's will, we sin. Jesus could have turned the stones into bread, but he would have been exercising his power independently of his father, and uh, he, he came to do, obey his father. And, and, and we should be looking to obey our heavenly father uh, instead of serve our, serving our own needs. John chapter 6 verse 38 says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And then we must commit to the idea uh, that not my will, but thy will be done, as Jesus stated in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was facing temptation. Matthews chapter 10, chapter 8, rather, Matthews chapter 6, let's get it right. Matthews chapter 6, verse 10 says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. And then verse 11 goes on to say, Give us this day our daily bread. We should depend on God. Matthew chapter 26, verse 42 says, 
he went away again the second time and prayed. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Note now that Jesus uh, quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3 to defeat Satan. He, he, he was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, which says, And he humbled you, speaking of Israel in the wilderness, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but, by, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of of the Lord. Feeding on and obeying God's word is more important than consuming physical food. I did not say that physical food is not necessary. I said feeding on and obeying God's word is more important than consuming physical food. In fact, it is the food of the followers of Jesus Christ. John chapter 4, verse 32 through 34, this is the English Standard Version again, says, But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know of. So the disciples said one to another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his works. Jesus is saying, in essence, doing should come before eating, as in the book of James, where we should be more than just hearers, but doers of the word also. Doing should come before eating, and, uh, and, 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 and well, uh, enough of that. It's about time to land this plane, and let's start with a question. Does God lead us into the wilderness and leave us to do battle all alone? First, God provides us the tools that we need for the battle. A hint, it is written. The main tool of our warfare against Satan is the word of God. Along with putting on the whole armor of God, know that you are not completely dressed for battle in this spiritual warfare without the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Remember when Israel was in the wilderness, God provided for them, He protected them, and was present with them. In the New Testament, it's explained this way in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 5 through 13. Uh, well, I'll read all of it. I'm reading from the message version. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 through 13. Verse 5 says, But just experiencing God's wonders and, and grace didn't seem to mean much. Most of them were defeated by temptation during the hard times in the desert. And God was not pleased. The same thing could happen to us. We must be on guard so that we never get caught up in wanting our own way as they did. And we must tur not turn our religion into a circus as they did. First the people parted. Then they threw dances. We must not be sexually promiscuous. They paid for that, remember? With 23,000 deaths in one day, we must never try to get Christ to serve us instead of us serving him. They tried it, and God launched an epidemic of poisonous snakes. And we must be careful not to stir up discontent. Discontent destroyed them. These are all warnings. They're warning markers like danger, danger, danger in our history books. 
written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. Our position in the story are parallel, they at the beginning and we at the end. And we are just as capable of messing it up as they were. Don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test. This is verse 13, the verse I wanted to get to. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limits. He'll always be there to help you come through it. And the English Standard Version uh, puts it this way, puts th verse 13 this way. This he says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, hallelujah, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Grandmama used to say he won't put more on you than you can handle. But will with the temptation also make a way to, dis to escape that you may be able to bear it. An example, a biblical example of uh, God providing a way. We just have to be willing to take the way that he provides. Uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse 6 through 12. Again, I'm reading from the message version. This is the story of Joseph being uh, sold into slavery uh, to Potiphar. Genesis chapter 39, verse 6 through 12. Verse 6 starts out by saying, And all Potiphar had to concern himself with was eating three meals a day. Joseph was strikingly handsome, was strikingly, uh, was strikingly handsome man. As time went on, his master's wife became infatuated with Joseph and one day said, Sleep with me. Uh... He, he wouldn't do it. He said to his master's wife, look, with me here, my master doesn't give me a second thought or, or give a second thought about anything that goes on here. In other words, he trusts me. He put me in charge of everything he owns. He treats me as an equal. The only thing he hasn't turned over to me is you. You're his wife. After all, he could, uh, how could I violate his trust and sin against God? She uh, pestered him day after day after day, but he stood his ground. He refused to go to bed with her. Now on one of these days, he came to the house to do his work and none of the household servants happened to be there. She grabbed him by his cloak, saying, sleep with me. He left his cloak, his coat in her hand and ran out of the house. And ran, and ran, and ran out of the house. Whatever way God provides you, take it. Whatever way God provides you for escape, take it and don't hesitate. Take it right away. Joseph was not so much a man in her hand that he ceased to be a servant in God's hand. God has provided a way of escape from the penalty of sin. For all of us, take it. If you haven't already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior to save you, 
take that way that God has provided. Jesus, the Son of God, according to John's gospel, uh, said, John said, behold, look, the Lamb of God that cometh to take away the sins of the world. There's no other name given whereby man might be saved. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. He's the way that has been provided. There's no other way. Jesus died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. For us, he hung, bled, and died. But early the third day, I mean early in the morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. He's our way out of no way. He's our rock in a weary land. And according to Genesis chapter uh, 22, verse 12, he's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our substitute. He, he's our redeemer. He's our way out. For you that haven't, take it. Let us pray. God, our Father, thank you for the bread of life that you give us that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for your son, Jesus, the living word. And we ask that you would just help us to always, when we're tempted, to lean heavily on your word, to depend on your word, to see us through. Help us to not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you that you may direct our path. Your word tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and you delight in his ways. Your word tells us that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path so that we won't stumble in darkness. Help us to choose your way out. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget, take the way out that God has given you. And, 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 and on a daily basis, God is, when we're tempted, God is providing a way out. Take it. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs>